Welcome back gamers to the games. That's right, I'm really excited to be giving you a review, cool and solid, on the Vanguard Warden, made by Aegis. One of my favorites, really, I, I hate to ruin the review already, but I'm going to tell you that this ship was one of my favorites to fly. I will give you positives and negatives. Um, here at Port Alisar, here's the looks of the ship. If you guys don't want the review, just fast forward by clicking here. You can see me dogfight in it. Really great fun. Oh, the laser fire. Okay, let's do this proper here. All right, I'm getting away from all the craziness. Let's look in the hangar here. Uh, plenty more footage. There is dogfighting. There is actually some missioning we do in the ship uh, with uh, some gamers. Lots of fun stuff. Let's get down here in the elevator. I cannot wait to get a good close-up look at the ship. I'm very happy that gamers in our community actually... Uh, say hey Al go ahead come on in our hangar and check it out and uh, without you guys I could not do this so uh, special thanks to all of our gamers here on the channel that make uh, these types of reviews possible we will be doing a star citizen uh, citizen speaks episode on trade coming up so for those of you wondering what's going on there don't worry uh, let's wow look at this beauty here not necessarily like a huge ship, but massive in the fact that it takes up some serious space. I mean, it does have like a very massive feel to it. Also a very stealthy feel to it. We're going to fly it and check uh, to see if it actually uh, can take damage as well as dodge it. Um, not going to go over the specs quite yet. Just want you guys to get an idea of the size of the ship, the lines of the ship. I really like the looks of the ship. I believe it was one of the uh, contest entries in 2014. I believe so. I saw some footage of it uh, where they had voted on this as a variant and uh, this had gotten uh, voted up. Not quite sure on that, gamers. Check my facts on that. Post it in the comments below. Love the top gunner seat. In fact, that's where I do a lot of my work. Um, wow, look at this Gatling here. Very cool. Uh, dig the skull here on the side. This is Apocalypse Guns. <laughs> And love that nose. Love the, love the guns situated on the nose. I love the missile racks here under the wings. Not very uh, uh, spread out. I kind of like that it's a little bit more compact and sleek. Uh, a little bit more aerodynamic looking. Let's go underneath here. And this is fantastic. I always love the entrances to a ship. It's, it's very important to me. Aesthetically, this has the look. That kind of Empire Straits back shuttle feel right there. Uh... I don't think this is normally supposed to be red in here, but well, it kind of gives you that you know warning look. But let's since we're talking about it, let's go over the specs here. Open up the little PC uh, and and look at the specs. And hopefully the PCs will have this type of capability once the game goes live. Be cool. Let's check it out. Aha! I knew I could get this on this PC. Like I said, if you don't want the technicals. Uh, you can skip by pressing this tab here, going directly to the dogfight, the adventure. But I always think that the technicals are very important when reviewing if you're going to buy the ship or not. Most of my reviews do have them. Uh, the Vanguard Warden is one of three different variants. You can see over here that there is a Harbinger and Sentinel that are not yet flight ready. We will go over those later and we will go over pricing soon. This is a Bulldog of a Fighter. Uh, forward mounted weaponry designated to tear through shields and armor so named because their multiple jump range allows them to perform the vanguard of any military expedition this could not only just be focusing on military uh, styled uh, organizations or any type of corporations you are going to get into uh, but you could also employ these for a very heavy hitting force if whether you know you're you're going to have a police force whether you're going to have uh, a very malicious styled organization um, has a very very intimidating look as you can see as you saw previously let's go over the actual technicals here as we are looking at the outside of the ship uh, it is 37 meters long 45,000 kilograms has two TR4 primary engines uh, there are 
12 TR2 maneuvering thrusters, which I always find important. I know a lot of people overlook the amount of thrusters on a ship, but it does give it more mobility. The more thrusters you see, the more powerful they are. I kind of would like to see them a little bit, uh, a little bit sized up to a TR3, perhaps, being that the ship is a, a larger, massive ship. Power plant at an S2, two power plants at S2, not quite sure why there's two of them. I almost feel like there should be one larger one, like an S3. Um, we'll see how that develops as time continues. We have uh, five, four S2 fixed mounts with one S5 uh, hard point with the pylon mount up top having two S2 sized guns, a man turret um, as well, and the shield being an S2 uh, over various parts of the ship. Uh, interestingly enough that the sizing is a little bit smaller on almost all of them than I would imagine they should be uh, but you know that's the way they've planned it so far here are your other variants your Vanguard Harbinger which is more of a bomber and your Vanguard Sentinel which is more of an uh, e electronic warfare ship which I really am into always liked uh, ECM style ships and you can see the variant uh, the differences uh, here however let's look at the buying options of the ship and here we go you have the Aegis Vanguard Warden coming in at 250 just a little bit expensive that's if you buy the standalone without the package uh, 250 now is it gonna be worth 250 for you well that's to be determined we'll find out once I start dogfighting and I will give you my uh, points as to whether I believe it is or not. The other ships, uh, they do not have pricing on yet as they do not have them available at this particular point in time. All right, let's get back to the interior here. Got a nice little red theme going on. Situation's critical. I think there might be a little bit of a glitch here. Oh, there's a gun rack, very cool. Uh, the bathroom for, the, you know, everybody's got to use that. <laughs> I think every ship should probably have a bathroom. I don't know of one that doesn't have a bathroom. Most of them do. I kind of... <laughs> not not the drinking water. It says, oh, okay. I like the door. Door's kind of different on that one. I like the old 70s style locker. Ah, there's the turret. Let's check that out. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm definitely digging turrets lately. Um... You know, I, I remember on older videos thinking that the turrets were going to be much harder to use, you know, considering the fact that, you know, in space it's more of a 360 degree. Oh, I like those monitors. That's kind of cool. Uh, you guys can check out what it looks like live as I fight. Again, that'll be shortly. Uh, but I, I remember critiquing the turrets thinking you couldn't hit much. But but actually, uh, you know, you, you can once you get really good at it. So... Turrets are becoming very useful, much much more so than, than I thought on prior videos. Uh, beds. Two, this is a two-man ship. Um, imagine you can do more than two. I always wonder about the game mechanics. It's a little kitchenette. What about the game mechanics, you know, when they say two? You know, maybe it just has to deal with the beds, you know. Uh, and I wonder how they're going to deal with the... What's this? That's like a latch of some sort. I can't use it. That looks like a... Kind of in system. Not quite sure what the hell that is either. If you guys have any idea, just comment below. Not quite sure what those are. Mm -hmm. Like a garbage disposal. <laughs> I'm not sure. More lockers. Uh, storage. Let me just check this out right here. I like the I like the the cockpit. I like the way the seat. Wow, that's pretty. That's sweet. Totally dig that. Aegis combat assist activated. Systems great. awesome. I love the looks of it. Uh, the instrumentation. We'll go over future videos on how to use uh, your your instruments. Very nice view. Uh, offers a very nice view here. Good field of view. Uh, just a really nice, very nice looking ship. And now that we properly, you know, checked out the ship here in the hangar away from all the chaos, let's go back to the chaos and let's uh, test out this baby, see what she's capable of, see if I like the way that she flies.
Attention. And there's one of our members from our gamer army. That's right. That's Toadie. Thank you for the help on this episode, Toadie. Appreciated your flying abilities because it gave me the chance to actually get great footage. I actually like being in the gunner seat so that I can get outside and inside footage for everybody here on the games. There he is flying, starting the mission to go to one of the relays. We're just going to test out the capabilities. Between Tony and I, we believe that the uh, Warden does have very good maneuverability. We do think that the turns are relatively slower than they thought than we thought they were initially going to be. I think that also has to do with the thrusters, as we talked about in the hangar. Here I am with a really cool view going up into the turret. You'll be able to see some of the combat uh, prowess of the uh, Warden. I have to say Systems that I had a blast. Um, Contact. I didn't hit much in the in the turret, but uh, I, I made a couple hits. <laughs> Turret gunning is very difficult. Also, you, you got to kind of train yourself on uh, one particular target, initiated. lead forward, Contact. Begin scan. and hope that the pilot state has moments of, you know, flying a little bit still. Uh, love that animation when the quantum complete. drive is uh, initiated. Very cool. Uh, here you get to see the outside of it as we're now this is the inside activated. There's your panels for your Begin targeting security. We've got the situation Begin scan. There's the relay that is off at the current moment Contact. And we're just gonna go Begin and cause scan. a ruckus. There's already uh, some of the NPCs fighting one another The sounds the audio very sexy. I like the Gatling gun just, just, just chewing things up System overheat. There go the nose guns. Danger. System overheat. Shields charged. Gonna pop off a few rounds here. Shields off. Scoring a couple down. hits on that crap. System overheat. There we go. Game over for that guy. Again, these are NPCs, so we're talking relatively easy. Uh, going up against humans, which we did do after this, uh, we just chewed through everything. I mean, really, this is a powerhouse. If you're talking about wanting a ship that's going to give you um, all-around good sustainability as well as uh, the ability to do some damage, this is a very good ship. One of the better ones I've flown. Uh, you know, I, I remember flying the Gladiator and the Bomber and how de devastating that was. This is a little bit different of a feel. Uh, the, the Gladiator felt a little bit more vulnerable than this ship. This ship kind of seems like a fucking brick shit house, pardon my French. Uh, but when you're flying this, you feel relatively safe. One of the, one of the things that um, we did have negatively to say about this ship was that it did tend to overheat quite a bit. I think it's understandable as, you know, we looked over the text and we saw that the uh, power supplies were an S2 and that there were two of them. It's kind of understandable that it's, it's shredding through energy so fast. One of the reasons I think they do need a, a better power management, maybe you can buy one. So this is us going down into uh, the relay. Basically, if you have not done this before, if you have done this before, thanks for joining us here on the games. We appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't, uh, this is kind of valuable uh, info to know. It's kind of there fun. Uh, right, during one of your missions, right. you go down. There's a toady right there. And uh, we end up going down to the relay. And then there happens to be some fighting, which I fly afterwards. Um, I don't bother putting that on this video because it does get relatively long, but I just wanted you guys to see this relay. The flying was fun. I did find that the turns were slow, as Toadie and I had stated, a little bit slower than we had liked. Uh, the thrust on it, not so much as we wanted either. So it's a little bit slower of a vehicle, understandably so. It is a thicker vehicle. Uh, but I tend to like vehicles that are painted black to match backgrounds with space a little bit harder to hit as they're harder to see. Uh, something to keep in mind if they're going to go with customizations of ships. I would actually like that there would be customized paint jobs, something that I had seen uh, gamers talk about in the Citizen Speaks. Uh, we will deal with that on a future Citizen Speaks episode. 
I did like the fact that this gave me a very immersive feeling when I went down to the relay. I was like, wow, this is really cool, just like crawling in this thing. I had seen it done before, but I never really did it. And you do get this feeling of the vastness of space and that there's just this man-made object out in the middle of nowhere that's kind of busted up that you gotta fix. I like it. I think there needs to be a little bit more customization in, in what you can actually Class fix EVA and get into to, uh, to fix these. I don't want it just to be push a button and the whole thing's fixed. I kind of want to be in, absorbed with some tools and things that are needed to uh, do a job like this. Now I understand why they're doing it considering now it's in the beginning stages and in very early alpha form. But I think as the game continues, what I'd like to see is a little bit more customization when it comes to, you know, like what particular tools I would need to fix uh, various different objects. I want it to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, we'll see down here that I'm a little bit confused as where to get the array back online. I think it's this panel, but it's not. It's uh, actually opposite of this. So if you're in the array panel trying to boot it, you want to go all the way down to the bottom and then you're going to want to kind of turn around the second you see this. I'm busy trying to figure out why this isn't working and eventually I turn around <laughs> and I see that it's directly behind me. Um, I'm hoping that ships also have this ability. We did go, you can check this video here, we talk about um, uh, mechanics and engineering where uh, ships will have uh, particular cylinders and parts, pieces uh, that have like engineering sections. There we go, upline, uh, uplink online. Go ahead and establish this, get this thing going and boot it up. Uh, and then we go ahead and get out. Uh, please, by the way, check out my Star Citizen playlist. You can check it out here on this card. And watch out Cody's watching. It was pretty cool when I found him out there. He had actually heard of the games. Uh, and uh, he figured that I was recording. We got into a conversation, which is really nice. Uh, you can see people fighting now around our um, warden and I'm just like oh crap better get back to the ship <laughs> overall fun experience is it worth $250 here we go guys I would say at this particular point in time if you got the money to spend and you can't think of anything else better to spend it on uh, then go ahead and buy the ship because I, I personally think that it is a very very like I said I, I will define it as such. This is a sustainable attack ship that is going to give you your 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 money's worth. Um, could it be a little bit less than 250? Yeah. I mean, like if it were in the 175 to 210 range, I'd say you know, without a doubt, go for it. But the fact that it's a little bit more makes me a little bit hesitant as it's a smaller interior. Uh, but of course, it's a ship that's designed to kill. So it's not going to have extravagant interior in it. Uh, the computer in the back could be a great targeting computer as well as an uplink maybe to do some type of uh, communications or trade. Overall, the ship was a very fun ship to fly. Um, a little bit slower than anticipated. The weaponry was monstrous. You did have to line up your sights a lot going forward. Uh, the turret gunner should be very good no matter who you decide to man it uh, unless you have like an NPC turret gunner I understand because of lack of uh, communication and time to meet up with friends and the overheating was a slight issue it did overheat a lot so that kind of bugged me but other than that a very solid ship thanks guys for watching the games please support us on patreon and check you out on the next vid